there we are. Hello, happy Sunday afternoon. This is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. So this is just a Sunday afternoon, um, hopefully quick little video. You just kind of never know. Um, we had a little bit of technological tech technical difficulties um so we're a smidge late but the typical technical difficulty we're having now is the gimbal is not charged and the gimbal is what athena normally holds so that things don't get all wobbly and stuff and so she doesn't have to hold their arms up like this the whole time so now the video can't be as long as i thought it might be because athena's arms will get really really tired so i think i can see people on um this has got to there we go skip the ad and then i should be able to start seeing anything that you have to chat so go ahead if you have any questions athena can see the chat so if it's a question question she'll kind of let me know that i need to look at that question or she'll read it to me but you know let me know that you're out there is always helpful because otherwise i just think that i'm talking to the midair and the internet and they don't really care about quilting as much as you do all right so what i want to do today is do some quilting on my power quilter 1600 i did a video before right before christmas telling you a little bit about my new machine and so i'm going to continue to do more videos on this machine some just different ways of you knowing what it's about so that if you're to this stage and you're thinking you need a bigger quilting machine and you have the you know the moolah to do it you're going to have some idea what kind of machine you might actually be looking for all right so we got iowa hello iowa and pennsylvania and wisconsin and hello all in florida and the netherlands hi netherlands don't know if you know this or not but my last name is rob sama my husband is dutch and we've been to the netherlands a couple times so someday i want to come to the netherlands and teach so before i get started quilting i want to show you some tools that i'm going to be using um, I want to show you my scissors, but now I can't find them. Okay, seriously. There, they're on the quilt. So the scissors aren't the big deal, but I want to show you this. This is Hugo's Amazing Tape. I've talked about it before, um, and the reason that I love it is when you get threads that are being unruly, you can take like this particular spool of large thread doesn't have that little slot on the bottom. So I can take my thread and wrap the Hugos around it and it sticks on to each other like that. I use Hugos for wrapping lots of different things because it's not going to wrap it really tight like a, um, a rubber band. So you can even wrap quilts that you want to keep in a roll with it. So invisible thread is the worst of the worst of the worst. And with the Hugos, if you can find the end of the invisible thread, being as it is invisible, and then you can wrap the Hugos. And Hugos is reusable. So this is going to keep my threads looking really, really good. Hugos comes in, this is the half inch, there's a one inch. I know that Laura at firesidequilts.com does have Hugos in stock. So take a look at that if you've ever looked at that. And while I was thinking about my threads, I was talking to a student and I was telling her about my threads. So, ooh, that little cord got in the way. Here is one of my thread drawers. You've seen the ones on the wall, and we'll see those again. But I was telling her how I have my threads organized by color in colored drawers. So this is a smaller cabinet with colored drawers. Here's some yellows and greens. Here's some blues. So this is how I have the threads organized that I usually am doing um, machine quilting with. This is my thick threads. So those are the ones that I'm going to be doing some bobbin work and things like that. I see a little screen. Can you program patterns into this quilting machine? No, Linda, you cannot. I will tell you what that screen can do. All right. But the other thing I have in these drawers, so more threads here. Here's a green drawer. Most of these are Florianis, but there's a lot of different ones. There's Magnifico from Superior. There's some Robinson Anton in here. Um, I had gotten from a friend that had been doing embroidery with Floriani. She was switching over, and so I actually bought all of her older um, ones. Hello, Not My Name. You know what? Not My Name from Long Beach, California. I'm looking here on my chat. I don't have your email. You're a member, and I don't have your email. So if you could send me your email, that'd be great. One more thing down in the drawers. As this is getting to what we're going to do. This drawer is going to store my pre-wound bobbins. All right. So I'm going to, you can see that I've got some different colors, but let's bring these up here. 
Now, the power quilter does come with the bobbin winder. I showed you that the very, very first time, and it works. I just have no patience for winding bobbins. So with this particular quilter, quilting machine, it is a size M bobbin, which is bigger than the ones that I had been using on my grand quilter. These are the super bobs, and these come in the size L, which, uh-oh, Athena's going to sneeze, everybody. Hold on. Okay, she's not going to. So these are a size L. These are the ones that will go in a normal machine. Size M is bigger. That's what a long arm machine will carry. Well, when I got rid of my Gamma long arm about 15 years ago, I got rid of all my pre-wound M's. So I had to go and find some. The reason I'm pointing these out is I had a hard time finding some that I liked. So this is a wonder fill thread, which is an 80 weight, which is finer than that. And I found them at a really good price at a website that is not my normal, you know, normally I send you to firesidequilts.com. This one was Quilted Joy. And this is the kind of stuff she sells things for long arm quilters. So that's where I found the pre-wound bobbins. And they come in lots of different colors. So I bought just neutral colors. I'm not using one this dark but I just bought a variety of dark, medium, and light neutral colors, and then some that are actually a um, actual color. These are the bobbins that I'm gonna use in my machine. All right, and they're gonna store down here in my little drawer of pre-wound bobbins. That's my little happy drawer of pre-wound bobbins. The other thing over here is also going to be my um, pin storage. So this is where I put my safety pins. This is available at Fireside Quilts. I don't know if she has it on the website. So you might have to email her. Hello, Tennessee and Tuscaloosa. No, T Titusville. My niece used to live in Titusville. In Lansing, Michigan. Hi, quilted poodle, Natalie. Um, so these are what we, I put my pins in. These are number two size safety pins. That is a piece of foam. And then this is an art bend tote. And Laura at Fireside actually has this all set up as a kit. So you can purchase that so that it's right there and ready for you to use. I'm going to move these threads out of the way. What was the website again? The website for those pre wound bobbins is quiltedjoy.com. I don't know who she is, but she always does send a nice little note saying, you know, oh, you're going to love this color thread. And I think that's really, really sweet. A little bit of personal touch with her um, website. But that's if you've got a machine that needs the M size bobbin, like this machine, that's what you want to find. I also might get to be able to tell you a little bit about these. So one of the things about having a machine that's set up like this, and you can do this on your regular machine too, but then you have to buy a really expensive, if you ask me, foot. But the idea of using rulers. Now, this machine does not have the ability for a walking foot. It doesn't even have feed dogs on the bottom. So without a walking foot, many people are going to find it very difficult to quilt a straight line. So I've gotten myself just a few of these acrylic rulers. They're a quarter of an inch thick, lots of different designs. Um, these ones in particular by Creative Grid, and if you ever go into any um, quilt shops, you're going to see their rulers. Well, they make rulers for Angela Walters. And Angela Walters is one of the many um, YouTube influencers with quilting, and her thing is quilting. She does a lot of quilting. Honestly, I've never watched her videos just as I don't watch other people's videos, but from the people I know that do watch her videos, they say she is very, very good. So these are actually designed by Angela Walters, and depending on how tired Athena's arms get, I might be able to get to showing you how these work. They're good. She says they're good right now, but we're not going to start with that, Athena. We're going to start with something else. So I'm going to store these over here in this little box here, so they're going to all be hanging out there. And then I also have some new ones from Quilter's Rule that I've not tried yet. Um, I picked them up when I was in California at the um, Road to California show. This one is white instead of clear, and she was selling these at 50% off. So I grabbed a couple of different ones, and so we're going to see how those work probably in the near future. Now, normally when I am doing my quilting, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to use the sort quick. On um, quilts that are twin size and smaller, this is what I'm going to put on my hands. Sort Quick, which is available at Fireside Quilts, is a, I don't know what it is. It's a thing. It's a substance. Let's call it a substance. That's a big fancy word I don't get to use very often. And the idea, huh? And it, well, it's not really adhesive because they're not going to stick together, 
but it's kind of like that substance on a post-it note. A post-it note will put things together, you know, temporarily, but it's not going to keep something from pulling it off. That's what it makes your hands feel like. That's what I typically am going to do when I'm doing free motion quilting. But looking over here, love that. And so Sharon, yep, if you've used the sort quick, you've got to love it. Um, but with the bigger quilt, I found that I need to also wear my gloves. And my sister Renee was quilting a bigger quilt, she said just recently, and her hands got so tired, she actually wore bigger, thicker um, gardening gloves because your hands get tired. So depending on what you're doing, the size of the quilt, the designs you're doing, you might want to consider getting all of these different options so that you're ready. So that when something happens, you don't have to go, oh, now I have to go to the quilt shop. Now I got to pick this up. Pick these things up ahead of time. The gloves, the sort quick, those actually are at Fireside Quilts. So these are machine gears. Um, they don't match. I probably have another grungy pair left right hand side and I probably have a really nice side somewhere else but these are the two that I can find at this moment in time. Um, all right so I also have pair of scissors handy. This is a needle threader. I'll tell you about this in a little bit. I'm going to put it back here for now. I purchased with my machine. The machine table only comes to here which it's a pretty nice size table. And then I was using this table alongside of it, which is good. It worked really well. But as much as I do, I needed something more, something quicker, something more permanent, and something super duper stable. So I purchased the extra extension table. This can fold down so it doesn't take up that much room in my studio when I need more other studio space. But I still found with such a large quilt, I'm going to also put this table right here. So that when I'm working on the quilt and it gets bigger, it's going to hang out over here. Now, there's plenty of room behind it because the machine is going to keep the quilt from going all the way back down. But I do want to try to keep the quilt on the table. So I actually fold it under. I kind of roll it. And, this, you know, when you're doing a big quilt, pretty much you're doing whatever works. So do whatever works for you. Um, but I like to take it and roll it under and then keep as much as I can shoved back here at the back of the machine. Then I've got all of this lighting going on here. I've got plenty of space to do the work that I want to do. And I can be working here with it and work on a block like this. For now, because Athena needs to be able to get in here and get closer, we're going to move this table. Whoops out of the way so that Athena can actually come on in here. I'm going to show you a little bit of the screen because somebody asked a question about that. Okay, so this is the screen. Now what this is going to have, the main thing about the screen is that it's going to have manual and that means that you are doing the length of the stitch by how quickly you move the fabric or a regulated stitch length. Now I in all truthfulness, did not think the regulated quilt stitch would be something I used very much. I was wrong. I stand corrected. I really enjoy using it for a few different things that I'm going to show you today. When you're using the regulated stitch, you're also going to choose what stitch length you want it to be. And I am choosing a 12 stitch length. So that's 12 stitches per inch. Here I also can just hit the go button and it'll go all by itself. I can do my needle up and down, which is right here, which is fabulous. Right now I am recording the length of a bobbin so that later on I'll be able to set it so that I'm putting in that same size bobbin I got from Quilted Joy and then I'll know when I'm running out I can actually do a, um, a little timer on it. And I don't know what this 350 is down here. Oh, I know what, that tells me how long I've been working on this quilt. So 350 minutes, minutes which would be 120, about five, six hours. So that makes about sense. I've probably been doing it at least that long. So that's what the screen is all about. It is not um, designs, right? Underneath here is something really important. So come in here, are these two little sensors, these little windows. These are the windows that make it possible for the stitch regulator to work. The previous versions of at least this machine, the stitch regulator was this thing that you had to have on top and it was a pain in the half. But do know 
that the stitch regulators do not, in my experience, work very well if your fabric on the back is a solid. Now, if you've been watching me machine quilt at all in the last six years, you know that putting a solid on the back of a machine, a back of a quilt is a no, 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 no. And now it's a no, no, because it really doesn't work that well with the stitch regulator. So keep that in mind, right? So we are going to start quilting. So I've got my machine set up here. I'm gonna take off my slipper so I can feel my pedal and move it so I know I've only got one layer. Scissors. Yep, I'll move the scissors here in a second. So I've done some pinning. I'm using a bamboo batting. There's that pin. I'm going to reach back here and put it in my little styrofoam case. And I'm going to do what is called continuous curves. When I teach it, I call bopping. I go from bop from here to over to here, but that's what we're going to do. And according to my friend Karen, Nancy, it's called continuous curves. All right, okay. I can change and call it what you want me to call it. So with this, I've got the thread and I am using one of those Floriani embroidery threads in the top and I have that 80 weight wonder fill in the bobbin in the pre-wound bobbin. I am quilting with pink so you can kind of see here on some of the other blocks that I've already done. I'm kind of quilting with the pink because it kind of makes everything glow on this quilt. It just really looks pretty. And then I've been doing it long enough that I'm okay that I can see the pink on some of these other colors. Generally speaking, if you're just starting out and you're doing continuous curves, you're probably gonna do it with invisible thread. Since I am working with a pink, I am going to always start somewhere on the pink. I'm not gonna start on the dark blue or on the light blue. I'm gonna start on the pink so that my starting and stop will be a little bit more hidden. And right here, I'm just gonna bop my put pedal till it goes down, bop it up and bop it until it comes up and then Dun, da, da, da. there's my bobbin right there, which is not there. Grab it, Nancy. Get serious. Oh, there. Okay. Going to start right here. Going to work, bop my needle down again. All right. My needle is in the down position. I am using the stitch regulator. I'm going to put my gloves on. It's a little bit easier on this big quilt. As I start, I'm, my pedal goes down, but I don't adjust the speed with my pedal. I put my pedal down and I leave it there. But I'm going to move the quilt just slightly forward. So I have like um, maybe five or six little stitches in a row. That's my locking system. Now I'm going to carefully go all outside of that seam. So from the seam to my stitching line is approximately a quarter of an inch or the width of your foot from the needle to the width of the foot. Now I'm going to bop or continuously curve to the other side and then I can come back. I can really with the stitch regulator get really precise where I'm going to put my needle and then come back up. Okay. Now I'm going to work my way clockwise around the quilt in this case. Doesn't mean you have to. I'm going to bop on down to the next one. Now I'm going to do the horizontal. Go to that intersection, stop, readjust my hands, go to the next intersection, stop. Now I'm going to continue on this intersection. And so far, I've been able to do all of these blocks continuous with no stops. Um, no, like having to literally cut my thread and stop and start again. I find a way. You can draw the block out ahead. And for some people, kind of drawing the block out ahead and kind of planning your stitching path can be a very, very good thing. So with the stitch regulator, what I have found that has really surprised me very much, I did not expect it, is how precise I'm able to get my intersections when I'm doing this type of quilting. I'm going to the points like I have never gone before. I've never been able to get them that precise, which is one of the reasons that I tried to do this with invisible thread. But I hate invisible thread. It's a pain. It's a necessary evil. But working with invisible thread is nobody's idea of a good time. I don't think it's any machine's idea of a good time either. So whenever I'm doing this and I get to one continuous long line on the block, I usually go the entire length or width or diagonal of the block. Um, so I started here and went to the other side. I find that's one way that I don't get myself lost 
And I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to stop and kind of look and go, all right, I've got this quarter section done here. Now it's time to work my way to the other side of this flying goose. And then I can come down and work these. So I think I'm doing okay. As I'm coming here, I want to literally try to stitch on that pink stitching line and then come over to the corner. Will I always be able to stitch exactly right on that stitching line? Nope, I am human. But that is my intention. Know that if I do not stitch directly on the line below, I just say to myself, well, that was a good job, Nancy. Let's move on and continue. I will never take that out. To me, that would just be working backwards. I don't work backwards. I'm always moving forward. Come to this intersection, do this diagonal. And I like crossing from one side to the other side. So Sing up and down the block whenever possible. All right, so now I'm gonna bop on over to here and I'm gonna to go to the left side of that line, match up that intersection, and I'm gonna to go to the right side of the next line and I've gotta to go to one more. There's another piece behind. Okay. And then come back on the opposite sides. So these lines are actually crisscrossing or Sing from one side to the other. That gets you very nice intersections on the back of the quilt. Right, right to here. Now I'm gonna go all the way up the middle. So it almost seems like I'm working backwards, but at some point you gotta go back anyway. Oops, and I gotta go all the way up to the top on this one. So Athena's really working hard trying to maneuver in here to get the very best shots that she can. I hope you guys appreciate that. Oh, and she's trying not to shake. So my son is working on setting me up a ceiling mount camera so that I, when I'm doing these in the near future, hopefully, um, we won't have to count on Athena's arms. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go up to here. And then I'm going to come on the opposite side for the other part of that flying goose. Then go up. And I'm like I said, I'm trying to keep these to be a quarter of an inch from the seam line. And these blocks, this whole quilt, this is my Sunset Over Dublin quilt. So you might have seen that entire series. The book is available on my website, onpoint-tv, and I will put that link in the bottom. It's not there now, but I'll put it in when I do the review on this one. Um, so this is Sunset Over Dublin. It's a whole series that we did on these piece blocks that are all eight inch piece blocks. So when you're looking at this quilting design, these, you know, half square triangles, these are all two inch based. If I was working on one that had a larger block, I might actually do some deeper quilting where I might actually come in deeper into the block. And I'll actually show you one of those. Oops, so I got to there. Oops, stop. Pedal down. Oh, okay. I just need to go back. For a minute there, I thought I had to go forward, but now I'm almost done with this one. So I'm going to do this diagonal to the back, starting on the left-hand side, crossing over to the right-hand side. And when you hear the machine speeding up and slowing down, I'm not actually sure if you can really hear it that well. Okay. When you're hearing that, I'm not adjusting my pedal, but I am lifting my pedal when I want to stop. So I'm ready to go again. I put my pedal all the way down. The speed is determined by how fast I move my hands. Now, is it perfect? What do you think? Those of you that have been ever watching any of my videos, is there any chance that this machine is perfect? Nope. Never met a perfect thing yet except Christ. And he, to the best of my knowledge, was not a quilter, although that would be really funny, wouldn't it? No. Okay, anyways. So <laughs> I digress. All right, so I am going to come over here. I do see this intersection. I have not done, and it's, I've got no other chance to do it than right now. Oh, you know what? All the way around, from here to yeah, here yeah. to here to here. Yeah. I didn't do those. So glad I noticed. So I'm going to go on the inside of that square. Then I'm going to go on the outside of that square. Then I'm going to go on the inside, outside, and then I'll be on the outside now because I already did the inside. Get right there into the corner, inside. So doing it so that you're kind of, you know, 
S curving into the two big blocks is going to make your intersections much, much nicer. All right, so now I got there. Oh, so now I got to go backwards. Okay, on the left hand, right hand side, on the left hand side, and we're almost done with this block. And so at this point, I've only got two more to do around the outside edge, trying to get my thread to go right on top the previous thread. And I'm getting, oops, I gotta stop here and get that thread out of the way. Right there. All right, so now I wanna cut my thread. So to cut my thread, here's my pair of scissors. I'm gonna lift up the needle, bopping my foot to lift up the needle, bring the quilt forward, put my thumb there. So now I've got the thread in my loop, bop my foot down, bop my foot up, bring it forward, and there is my bobbin thread right there. All right. So now I'm going to cut off my bobbin thread and my starting and stop threads right there. Okay. And then I put them on this little piece of batting I have on the wall. So that kind of holds my threads for a while until I'm done quilting and I can move around. All right. So that is how you do continuous curves on a block. And on my last video, somebody wanted to see the backside. So as we go to the backside, look at this one first. So on this one, I talked about that if the block is bigger and has bigger squares, instead of just coming a quarter of an inch from the edge, like on this large triangle, which is a four inch half square triangle, I'm going to come in farther. So that's coming in, I don't know, three eighths of an inch, maybe a half inch. I'll bet that's about a half inch. So that's going to even out the quilting so that I don't have, if I just come in here at a quarter inch, I'm going to have an awful lot of unquilted there in the middle. So let's see what the back side of it looks like. So looking at this block here, we're going to see what the back of it looks like. That is what the back of it looks like. So I am using a medium taupey kind of a color. My intersections look really pretty good. Tension is fabulous. I've had no issues with tension on this machine whatsoever. Um, everything is looking really good. Now, how long have we been? How are your arms? Seven minutes. Um, my arms are actually good to my neck. Okay, our neck's getting tight. I want to show you one more thing. But because, because before I started quilting these blocks, the first thing I did was stabilize the quilt. See these straight lines done here? Yeah. I have to stabilize the quilt so then I can be working on the individual blocks. So looking at it from the front, that is done with these lines here. So see these? Now I didn't use a black thread because I didn't want to use a black thread because then I would have to use a very, very dark thread in the bobbin and I didn't want to do that. So I used this kind of medium dark gray-ish kind of thing and I like that. I think that's looking pretty good. And then what I will quilt inside of those, which I think we'll get to, we'll get to next time I quilt, okay? On those is I'm doing what I call alien heads. Some people call them puzzle pieces, you know, whatever you want to call them. They are quilt filler is what they are. That will fill this. But to do those straight lines, I use those rulers. And so in a so soon coming video, I will show you how we use those rulers and the different things that you can do with the rulers. Um, a lot of people have videos on do, using rulers only working on a small piece. Well, what does that get you? You really need to know how to use those rulers on some bigger pieces because the whole idea is you want to quilt a quilt. You're not always going to quilt a pot holder. Now, is it fine to practice on a pot holder? Sure it is. I don't use that many pot holders, but if you do use them, that would be fine. But we need to know how to do these things on big quilts, which is why I'm showing you like how I handle this and all of this massive amount of stuff. The other thing that I do this time I'm actually using a bamboo batting, and I am finding that that bamboo batting is leaving a lot of linty stuff on here. So as I'm coming to the sections, I haven't quilted the borders yet, I've quilted the inside and then the outside, but I'm actually taking my backing and pulling it over and pinning it because there's just so much linty stuff coming out on it. Um, at one point we'll do a video doing this, and honestly that video will be in the next couple weeks max. I got to get this quilt done for a show. I've got other ones that I need to get quilted too. All right. So let's hear, yeah, barefoot. 
put the extra table on blocks to make it level with my machine. And that's exactly right. You want this extra table, this extra extension to be as flat as possible. So Sharon says she put hers up on blocks. So that's, you know, one of the things. Like I said, I will now use this extra table. I will bring it in here. So then my quilt will even have more space. And I'm talking to Bill. I want Bill to build me a maybe a six inch wide table to put on here so I can have a little bit more space there. And if you're not doing queen to king size quilts, you're not going to have to worry about any of this. I mean, the other table is big enough for most of your, you know, lap size, twin size kinds of quilts. All of this is just going to make it easier. And that's the whole idea is making the quilting easier. <gasps> Hello from St. Petersburg, Russia. Thank you very much. And oh my goodness, New Forest. Well, thank you very much, Krish. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope you love quilting as much as I do. All over the world, people are quilting. And it's one of those things that we can understand. We don't even have to speak the language. You can watch somebody piecing and quilting, and you can totally get what they're doing. And it's amazing to me how much information is on YouTube. We were watching a, um, a YouTube just before I came down um, on this guy that converted a FedEx trailer truck into a home and he lives in it and all the different things and he's like for four years all he did was watch youtube on how he wanted to do it and then he stuck to it and bill's like yeah i'll give you six hours of planning and i'm done bill doesn't plan that long well i don't know that that's true he certainly did a lot of research for the fish yeah he did, yeah, he did. all right nothing else all right so we've got thank you very much the risers, making things higher so it's more comfortable. Thank you very much for joining me on this short little Sunday afternoon. Um, these videos are always available on the YouTube, so you can watch them anytime you want. I do have a video that is recorded but not published yet on the batting, how I did the basting on this quilt, because when I did the basting, the batting was too small. You ever done that? You get half the quilt, you know, all laid out, you're ready, and the batting is too small. So we did a little video on how I actually fix that up. So that'll come soon. Athena's going to download it today, get that edited. And so you'll see how I did the basting on this quilt. And I think that's it. Thumbs up, subscribe, join membership, all that kind of good stuff and have a great Sunday.